Hello, this video is about how I pass the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Professional Exam. First thing I'll show you is the result here. Pass AWS Certified Solutions Architect Professional. Passed it on June 3rd, so about two weeks ago, roughly, from the time that I'm making this video. Back in 2021, June 5th is when I passed the associate level, which was about to expire. So last year, I decided that I was going to pass the, or attempt to pass the Solutions Architect Professional Exam, which automatically renewed. If I go to certification, certification status, you can see passing the professional expires three years from when I passed, automatically renews the associate level. I'm not sure how helpful that is. If you've passed the professional, the associate doesn't mean as much at that point but it does renew it if it's not expired when you pass the professional. In 2022, I passed the developer associate. Those are my three that I've, that I've passed with AWS. The solutions architect professional is about three or four times harder, at least, than the associate level. So that's one thing. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Now that I've Pass the professional solutions architect. Maybe I'll work on the DevOps professional or SysOps associate. I'm not sure yet if I'll do that or, or maybe just take a break. But this is about specifically about solutions architect professional exam. First thing I'll say is lots of hands-on experience designing and implementing solutions. I'm not going to read these slides word for word. If you're just listening, I have slides here but I will cover everything. So you don't have to watch, you don't have to read if you'd rather listen. Hands-on experience. There's no way I would have passed this exam without setting up virtual private clouds, uh, VPNs, route tables, using EC2, S3, CloudFront, reading all of the logs in CloudTrail and CloudWatch, uh, deploying with CloudFormation, using some of the CI CD services, implementing security firewalls all there's no way if i had not done that hands-on i would not have been able to pass this exam because the questions are long uh, it's, you barely have enough time to read the question and pick the right answer if you're not familiar with it already as soon as you read it if you're not familiar with the service you're you're reading about it'll be really hard to pick the right answer uh, i mentioned a few minutes ago there is a big jump between taking the associate and the professional. The questions are much longer in the professional. You have two hours and 10 minutes for the associate level for 65 questions, which is roughly two minutes per question. And with the professional, you have 75 questions, you have three hours, which is roughly two minutes and 24 seconds. So for 20 more seconds, 24 more seconds, you have a question that might be twice as long with answers that are longer and more difficult, more nuanced questions and answers. And most of the questions have more than one right answer, but it will, there will be something in the requirements, meaning you have to optimize for cost or there's a time constraint on when you can implement it. Maybe you don't have time to set up Direct Connect, although Direct Connect would be better. You don't have time for that. So you have to use some sort of VPN solution or it's asking for the most secure, or it has to have high availability, or it might not need high availability or scalability. But if the question says it needs it, then you have to pick your answer based on that. And if, you, if you've taken the associate and you barely had enough time to finish the associate, you're definitely not ready for the professional. You can get there, of course, if you study and learn more about the services and, and get more hands-on, but if you haven't breezed through, if you haven't been able to pass the associate level exam really easily, then you're not ready for the professional. Now, if you barely pass the associate, I wouldn't be concerned. Just means you need to study a lot before you're ready for the professional exam. One of the things I recommend is finding a good training course. I, done, I took one training course for this, so I can't really compare it to any other training courses, but Adrian Cantrell, he has lots of AWS training courses, and 
I didn't take it, his, for the associate level, but I did take it for this professional, the Solutions Architect Professional, I took it. And I can tell you it's an excellent course. It's very long, lots of videos, lots of hands-on using, setting up organizations and various accounts. And you have a general accounts and a development account. You'll have all, all kinds of different accounts, something, things that you would need to set up in real life. So you get that hands-on. There are lots of demos or uh, some people will call them labs, but it, it's hands-on practice is what it is. And that's what you need yeah, within a training course and within real life still. Uh, build some personal projects. If you don't use AWS at work day-to-day, -day, make sure you're building projects on your own. Read the documentation. If you have questions about a service or uh, you, even if you're taking a training course and you learn how to build something and it gives you this perfect scenario of step-by-step -step how to do it, then that gives you an idea of how it works, but then you should read the documentation and go a little bit deeper if you have a question about it. Read the FAQs, read white papers, read all of the documentation. These are some of the services you need to know. There are many more. These aren't the only ones. If you don't know all of these really, really well, it'll be hard to pass this exam. And I'll probably leave some out, but these are some of the really important ones. EC2, CloudFront, Relational Database Service, Aurora, the NoSQL options, IAM, 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 however you pronounce it. People pronounce it different ways, uh, but it's Identity and Access Management. Organizations, high availability, scalability, security, S3, elastic block storage, elastic file storage, virtual private cloud, virtual private network, routing, cloud formation, CloudWatch, CloudTrail. If you don't know all these really, really well, I doubt you'll pass. And again, you'll need to know much more than these. And I'll show you here in the exam guide. So there's an exam guide here that goes over the exam, some of the domains, what's covered. Toward the end of this, you can see technologies and concepts that might appear. Compute, cost management, database, disaster recovery, high availability, management and governance, microservices and component decoupling, migration and data transfer, networking, connectivity, content delivery, security, serverless design principles, storage. Okay, those are the technologies and concepts, which means there are many, many services that you can use. I won't read all these, there are way too many, but you can see what is in scope for the services and features of AWS for this exam, which means you could get questions on these. And for analytics, you've got so many, application integration, maybe you could get something about blockchain, and business applications, financial management, compute, containers, database, all these different services, developer tools, uh, Internet of Things. I did get questions on Internet of Things, IoT, machine learning. I got several questions about machine learning, management and governance, lots of questions in there, migration and transfer, plenty of questions about that, networking and content delivery, security, identity, compliance, storage, you could get questions about all of this. You don't know how many, it might just be one, but if you're on the line, barely going to pass, then it would be a good idea to know these, at least understand what they are and what they're for, even if you don't know them all deeply. Uh, if you get to a question and you've never heard of it, then it might be hard to answer the question. It probably will be. And I do want to mention one more thing. I, I talked about this early on in the video. Uh, let's see here, right here, has one correct response and three, so you have multiple choice and multiple response questions. Now even though the question, it says it has one correct response and three distractors, it doesn't mean that the other responses aren't feasible and viable, and it doesn't mean that perhaps you're already doing that in the company where you work, but for the question, because the question is very specific and it says something about optimizing for cost, or there's a time constraint, or it needs to be the most secure, or it needs to be highly available, or there's a scalability requirement. The other answer could work, but it doesn't scale as well as the other one, or it's not as secure. 
or it costs more. It works and it might even be faster, but it costs more. And the question is very specific about being uh, the cheapest option. So this it's not easy, but you can definitely pass this exam. It's definitely doable. If you study, if you have used these services, uh, then it is, it is doable, it is possible, but it won't be easy. And if you're just interested in, in AWS uh, and you're not sure if you want to take the exam, definitely still study for it because it's really valuable information to know. You should study for the exam anyway, and then the knowledge is going to be helpful and useful. Passing the exam is probably even better because that's a credential. This is something you could put on your resume and it might make the difference and getting a job interview or getting the job you want. I definitely encourage you to study for it. And then if you feel ready, take it. If you don't feel ready, don't take it because it, you do have to pay to take this exam. So you don't, don't want to waste your money. One other thing I'll recommend is trying to find some practice exams. AWS, they, this is easy to find. AWS publishes this sample questions. It gives you an idea of, of how long the question is and the answers. It, I doubt you'll get these exact questions or something very close, but you'll get some things that are similar to this. And, and it gives you an idea of what to expect. But this is three hours long. So you go through a question, you have to read very closely, very carefully what the question says what the answers are, and you choose the best answer. There might be more than one right answer. Occasionally, there'll be a question that says, in the description or in the requirements of the question, it says data will need to be using a relational database. Or it might not say relational database, but it's clear that there's some kind of relational connection between the data. So you know that a NoSQL will not work. That's very rare. I think I only had one or two questions that were like that, but even then, two of the answers might say Aurora or RDS, and they're both right. But there's something about a cost optimization or high availability, which makes one more right. So you have to choose that one. But for the most part, you can't easily eliminate two of the four. Often three of the four will, will still be right. There might be one that's clearly wrong and you can eliminate that. But if you don't know these services really well, then it will be hard to pass. And also I want to mention, this is AWS monitors what practice exams are out there and available. So don't think you can just get a practice exam, a set of, of practice exam questions and easily pass the solutions architect professional. As you can imagine, AWS wants this credential to mean something. So if it's easy to find a practice exam and then just pass the real one, then, then that devalues and waters down what this credential means. Last that I read, I think, was a 28% pass rate. So not even 3 out of 10 people pass. That I don't know if that's up to date in 2024, but that means the exam is very difficult. But it also means that you can pass it. If you study, put in the time, and get some hands-on experience with the services, and learn about the services you've never used, because there are too many, even if this is what you do day to day. If, if you use these services day to day, maybe you only use 50%, and that's all you need. That's all your business or organization needs, but there are 10 or 20 or 30 more that might be on the exam. So you need to at least be familiar with those. Last thing I'll mention is best of luck with whatever route you decide to go.